And now, this is the moment you all watching around the world have been waiting for in the sold out Primal Edge Health live stream. It's time! Two hours for the undisputed vegan versus carnivore heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the green corner with a debate record of one win, zero losses. He stands at five foot 11 inches tall, weighing in at 208 and one half pounds. Fighting out of his supplement laboratory in Toronto, Canada, presenting Mr. 19 inch arms, Richard Vegan Gaines Burris. Boo, boo. And now, introducing his opponent. Fighting out of the red corner. He stands at five foot eight inches tall, weighing in at 150 and one half pounds. Fighting out of the Bronx, presenting the pride of New York, Frankie Boy Tufano. Woo, go Frankie. So like, okay. Oh, me, so I'm going gonna, gonna to have to explain this. Hold on. Okay, well, you're, you're either trying to say one of two things. Can I demonstrate that increased uh, circulating levels of LDL cholesterol in the blood increases the amount of uh, cholesterol that ends up embedding in the arter artery wall, or you're, you're mixing, like you're mixing up terms again. And you're just asking me to show, no, I think you're just delaying me and asking. No, me I'm not. You're, you're just fucking time. not making any sense. All right, let's, I, I don't want to turn saying. into just arguing over semantics. If you, if you have a question, a specific question for Richard, or if Richard has yes, a specific this is the question, all right, this is the question I've, I've I had the wording incorrect. I, I did not. Well, I technically didn't have the wording incorrect. He's just not interpreting what I'm saying correctly. Can you show me a study? indicating that LDL serum cholesterol is associated with LDL cholesterol binding more to proteoglycans in the arterial wall. Okay, so basically you're, you're just asking me to show whether or not there's an association between circulating LDL and increased plaque buildup. No, okay. that's not what I'm asking. That, that literally is what you're asking. No, it is not. That Prote is literally what you're asking. So, this, let me, so let me explain what happens when LD LDL enters the endothelium it binds to proteoglycans, and it is then taken out by HDL cholesterol. If there is not enough HDL cholesterol or the fat is oxidized or it's inflammatory, what happens is a macrophage, a white blood cell, encapsulates the cholesterol. That can then get caught in the arterial wall, become inflamed. The I am asking you to show that increased blood LDL cholesterol increases the binding to proteoglycans as opposed to macrophages picking up cholesterol because it can't be taken out of the arterial wall. That is why I'm asking you to show. I want you to show oh, okay. a mechanism. Okay. You, you, you're claiming that LDL cholesterol and saturated fat is going to be associated with heart disease, but what, what's the mechanism in the arterial wall of elevated LDL cholesterol being an issue? Okay, so like you're talking about crap that literally doesn't matter. So. Okay, um, it doesn't matter. All right. No, no, it, it literally doesn't matter. It's it's basically like a weird red herring. Um, this weird mechanistic data you're asking for, it, it just doesn't matter. We have huge meta-analyses, randomized controlled trials, and genetic research. It's showing not weird. It's not serum. weird mechanistic data. Okay, it's well, a basic sorry, function sorry. of LDL okay. entering the endothelium. Okay, great, great. Okay, so I'm going to share this. Um, I just want to bring up one more thing. Like Frank is basically claiming that uh, vegan diets are inherently nutritionally deficient due to... You know, a number of issues like anti-nutrients and things like beans. Um, if you actually look at the uh, American Dietetics Association, I think they changed their name to the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. They're the largest nutrition. Uh, they're the largest nutrition organization in the world. They have, uh, I believe, over a hundred thousand licensed uh, nutrition practitioners. Uh, they released a peer-reviewed, published uh, paper stating that well-planned, appropriate, uh, appropriately planned vegetarian and fully vegan diets are totally appropriate for all stages of the life cycle, including uh, pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, adolescence, and athletes. And um, vegan vegetarian diets, uh, they're al they also offer uh, protection against uh, numerous chronic diseases, including heart disease, uh, type two diabetes, and certain cancers. So it's pretty clear uh, it's the consensus among uh, nutrition professionals and experts 
that you can be perfectly healthy on a vegan diet uh, as long as the diet is appropriately planned. Sure, I'm sorry. Link the study. Position of the American Dietetic Association on Vegetarian Diets. And this guy, Craig WJ, is one of the authors of this. Our buddy Craig is a Seventh-day Adventist vegetarian. Uh, okay. Mr. J. Craig received his Master of Public Health degree in nutrition from the Adventist-run Loma Linda University. He was once a research chemist at Loma Linda Foods and taught at the Adventist College of West Africa as well as Loma Linda University. Uh, do I have to really go into this, or can we just dismiss that study and say there's some sort of vegan and vegetarian? Okay, okay wait, wait, Frank, Frank. So if you pull up a study and the people who are who are in charge of that study ate meat, does that mean all the studies you provide are complete bullshit because the people ate meat? So they're obviously no, biased. but no. The, the, what they eat has nothing to do with it. They have a religious predisposition to pushing their diet and lifestyle. The Seventh Day Adventist well, lifestyle. And, okay. The well, mission of wait, the department wait. is to prepare dietetic and nutrition professional services to their church, society, and the world, and to influence the community at large to affirm the Seventh Day Adventist lifestyle, including the vegetarian diet. Okay. Well, no, Frank. These people who eat meat, they want to. They have a bias to promote their lifestyle. So can you give me are, uh, can you studies? give me the name of the meat eating religion, please? Okay. Well, it doesn't have to be a religion, Frank. It's their lifestyle. Well, the the point here specifically is your buddy Craig isn't so objective. Yeah, he's only one of the authors. Okay. Uh, well, and it, it, it uh, right. passed peer review. Let's go. <laughs> let's go into the other authors then. All right, we're going to the other authors. We're going to the other authors in your American Dietetics Association. Okay, we'll do it. Frank, you're still screen sharing, you know. I know. Okay. okay. We got we got okay, Anne Reed Mangles, so reviewer for the ADA's 1997 vegetarian position paper, co-author, vegan for ethical reasons. Oh, that's no big deal because she eats vegetables. That's okay. Okay. Catherine so, Conway. Okay. Okay. Vegetarian. Cool. So, Frank, Frank, all the studies you uh, you provide are complete vegan bullshit. For vegan right, for ethical okay. reasons. Vegan for ethical reasons. Okay. So all the studies that you provide. Are bullshit because those people eat meat. So obviously they have. But they a don't eat meat. They don't eat meat for ethical reasons. They don't eat meat because they like killing animals. They eat meat as a utility for nutrition. Well, no, they eat meat because they grew up eating meat. They think it's normal. They've been told like you have to have meat in your diet to be healthy. So they have a bias, right? So you can't. So every study you provide is complete bullcrap because they have a bias because they eat meat. The is point, the point is that the bias is not related to diet. The bias is related to their religious affiliation. Well, and their you life. just pointed out only one of them was an actual Adventist. The others were just vegan for ethical reasons. A lot of... Oh, do I have to specifically point out every single one of them that's a Seventh-day Adventist? Okay, <laughs> Frank, Frank, can you actually point out an issue with their uh, opinion paper? Like the actual paper, rather than just assuming they're biased because of uh, possible re religious or ethical beliefs. Let's take a look. You said saturated fat and cholesterol bad, but not for babies, right? Well, n well, no. Breast milk does have saturated fat and cholesterol, but it's a growing infant. The nutritional needs are different. So uh, are the nutritional needs of a growing infant different from a child, a, a preteen or someone through their early stages of life? Do yes, they then not absolutely. need cholesterol and DHA for brain function? Well, no, DHA is a good thing, but as far as saturated fat and cholesterol goes, no, as an adult, you don't need to eat cholesterol. This is uh, diabetes-related deaths from uh, 1968 to 2010. From 1968 to 1980, diabetes-related deaths have gone down drastically. Okay, so Frank, tell me what group, what diet group has the lowest risk of type 2 diabetes? Well, let me finish what I was going to say here. Vegans, right. I just want you to explain something for me because I'm a little bit confused. Sure, sure. Uh, so diabetes goes down sharply from 1968 to 1980. Okay, but wait, wait, wait. These can, are I, this is the death point? diabetes, right? Uh, diabetes death yeah. per million Deaths. goes down from 1968 to 1982. Yeah, that's probably because of the use of medication and, and insulin. And then beef the consumption went up drastically from 1960 to 1980. So you think eating 30 pounds of beef per year has no impact on your lifestyle? Wait, what? I don't, I don't beef understand. Beef consumption, beef consumption per capita went from 63 in 1960 okay. to uh, almost 90, over, over 91 in 1977. Over 30 pounds of meat per capita, well, per year, 30 pounds of meat per year, was consumed more by people. So... 
So you're saying red meat is bad for you? No, I'm saying if red meat consumption goes up 30 pounds and diabetes deaths per million goes down, why would you say that red meat consumption or saturated fat is linked to anything negative when as soon as they stop eating red meat and red meat consumption starts going down, diabetes starts going up again. As we see, diabetes goes back down to 2018 to lower levels than it was in 1960 okay, to Frank, be replaced with you, turkey and chicken. Frank, you don't think things like medication could affect this? But why would diabetes rates go up? Well, this is death rate from diabetes. This isn't actual prevalence. Well, diabetes, of diabetes. Yeah, death, why would death why would death rate of diabetes go up if our medication and our medical system has improved? Because of increasing rates of obesity and hypertension and yeah, I, I'd say it's mostly obesity. Uh, okay, Frank, is, is this just some like correlation you found or is this an actual study linking red meat consumption to decreased risk of death from type 2 diabetes? No, I was asking you how is it possible that red meat is so bad for you if people this eat 30 is, more pounds well, of meat a year Frank, and diabetes goes down? Okay, well Frank, this is just an average across the entire population and is that actually consumption or is it production? That's consumption per capita. How much okay. meat they eat per year? Okay, well, Frank, can you actually find me research showing that increased red meat intake is associated with lower risk of type 2 diabetes? Or death from type 2 diabetes, sorry? Can you show me a study that shows that meat consumption causes type 2 diabetes? Okay, well, yeah, I essentially can. So we actually know uh, precisely what triggers type 2 diabetes. So if you take a look at this study, fatty acids and glucolipotoxicity and the pathogens of type 2 diabetes. So uh, it goes into detail about this here. Uh, Western diets rich in saturated fats uh, cause obesity and insulin resistance and increase levels of circulating non-esterified free fatty acids. In addition, they contribute to beta cell failure in genetically predisposed individuals. So basically what happens is saturated fats- has nothing fats, to do with me consumption. Well, wait, 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 wait. Saturated fat uh, creates toxic break, uh, breakdown products known as non-esterified free fatty acids and they kill insulin producing beta cells in your pancreas. Uh, poly and monounsaturated fats, on the other hand, don't do this. It's only saturated fat. Uh, now there are plant sources of saturated fat like uh, coconut oil, palm oil, uh, but things like uh, dairy, cheese, uh, red meat, uh, processed meats, they're the, they're the most, yeah, like what uh, you know this guy's eating here. They're the uh, most significant source of saturated fat in a typical diet. So that is actually the main cause of type 2 diabetes, uh, saturated fat intake. Um, there's also this really interesting paper here. So Richard, can you clarify can you clarify why saturated fat intake is the number one cause of type 2 diabetes? Oh, okay. So, uh, like I just said, it it basically kills off the insulin producing beta what cell. The, is it, is it about saturated fat or is it about meat? Like, I thought it was about meat. Yeah, and, and we were trying to show that, that meat is in that meat. meat. So, and saturated fat kills beta cells in the pancreas. That's yeah. what you're saying? Okay. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it so does. So, saturated fat in the context of a standard American diet kills beta cells in the pancreas. I'd rather, if he wants me to speculate on them, I mean, all he's showing me is that saturated fat in the context of a Western diet causes health issues and i would agree with that there's that that does not that does not mean that because meat has saturated fat that's completely ridiculous do you know this do you know the vitamin profile of raw grass-fed butter richard no, it, no but frank uh saturated fat creates these toxic breakdown products which kill insulin producing beta cells in the pancreas i said earlier you you said that cooking has shaped human evolution but uh, i'm uh what Foods would they have actually eaten in the Ice Age period that was the majority of tens, hundreds, and hundreds of thousands of years ago? What exact plant foods would they have been eating that they would have gotten nutrition from? Um, and you said that you didn't really touch on the acidity of the stomach, the lack of enzymes. Like animals, ruminant animals actually have phytase as an enzyme in their digestive system and they can utilize phytic acid in their bodies. Uh, they can actually digest the phosphorus and the nitrogen in the phytic acid. So some of our ape ancestors ate Look, meat and hunted meat. So like the point I was making was there's no ape in existence that follows a carnivorous diet, a diet where it's low in carbohydrates, primarily consisting of animal flesh. I mean, I know I look, I know I have long arms, but I don't look like an ape, right? 
the the things Richard, I mentioned you earlier. To the question: the does low... Frank, Richard does Frank look like an ape? Answer: You have to answer the question. Does he look no. like? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> do I have do I have five gallons of plant matter fermenting in my stomach? Do, does my stomach have an alkaline pH? Am I sitting in the woods right. chewing plants for ten hours straight? Okay, I I don't know what point you're trying to make. Uh, I'm 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 kind of out there. So you you're you're also claiming that uh, um, uh, plant based fats are good for you. Yeah, poly and monounsaturated fats. And the so generally foods that contain omega six fatty, high amounts omega of omega three six. And six. But generally foods that have a very high omega six to omega three ratio. No, not necessarily. What do you mean? Like, okay, if we're talking about pumpkin seeds, then yeah, they have a huge omega six to three so, ratio. Uh, but hemp seeds. But, so what one. plant? So what plant foods are you recommending people consume for healthy fats? For healthy fats, um, avocados are fine. Uh, walnuts, hemp seeds, I think, are some of the most ideal. Uh, almonds, pistachios, things like that. But all those. I mean, all those nuts contain saturated fat. Yeah, uh, but they're shorter chain length, and they they're not long chain fatty acids. Chain length matters. So if we're talking about long chain uh, saturated fats, uh, that would be found in coconut and uh, palm oil. But as f like as f that's you know I don't recommend eating those fats obviously. But you don't re yeah, you just said, but you, almonds, but you don't recommend you don't so you don't recommend eating them. What coconut? You don't recommend eating the long chain oil? fats. You don't recommend eating the long chain fats, but you recommend eating the short chain fats. Yeah, long chain uh, saturated fats. So things like coconut, uh, coconut oil, and palm oil. So we shouldn't consume those. Yeah, you should avoid those. But it's okay. You're saying it's okay to have avocados, walnuts, hemp seeds, almonds, pistachios. Yeah, yeah. So why do gorillas and ruminant animals ferment plant foods into long chain fatty acids? But they don't. It's short chain fatty acids like butyrate. Uh, and we do that, that too. One. Ruminants produce long chain fatty acids in their gut. That's not a. That's not a. Okay, can you show us research for that? I'm uh, I'd to like to see right a study. Now. I'm just curious. Uh, like, and really, I, I don't even care. This is about human health. This gene, ELOVL6, which I'm assuming humans don't have, catalyzes the first and rate limiting reaction of the four reactions that constitute long chain fatty acids. Uh, condensing enzyme elongates fatty acids. Basically, gorillas have enzymes that catalyze the synthesis of unsaturated C16 long fatty acids and to a lesser extent C18 and those with low desaturation agree. Uh, so there's G th this is so much more complicated than people go, make it out wait, to be. Wait, sorry, go back up to the top. Uh, elongation of very long chain fatty acids, protein six, organism, Western lowland gorilla, gene ELOVL6. Uh, I mean, this uh, okay. is something I just I, found. I, I don't understand what this has to do with... Um... No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just making, I'm just making, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that you're, you're saying that we shouldn't consume long chain fatty acids, but gorillas produce long chain fatty acids in their guts. So let me move on to something more okay, relevant. Well, to, wait, wait, that didn't have anything to do with them producing long chain fatty acids in their gut. I think my point is that gorillas produce, my point is that gorillas produce long chain fatty acids in their well, bodies and humans don't have the capability. Well, so we do. So do we. Humans don't have the capability. Humans really? so, are not able to so, produce. Wait, Human, wait. Humans cannot produce long chain fatty acids by gut fermentation. Okay. Well, that's that study you just linked. It had nothing to do with gut fermentation. My point is that ruminant animals have digestive capabilities to we're not form ruminants. long chain like, fatty. Look, yes, that we, is my we point. Agree we're not ruminants. My point is that ruminants are obtaining long chain fatty acids through their digestion. Yet you're saying we shouldn't. Wait, wait. You're saying ruminant animals like horses and cows can can produce long chain fatty acids through gut fermentation? No, their guts ferment it into certain chain fatty acids, and then various enzymes that they produce because they have these enzymes and we don't change that into long chain fatty acids. Okay, so you're saying humans cannot produce long chain fatty acids on our Human, own? Humans cannot ferment long chain fatty acids from plant foods. Okay. Foods. Okay. What, That's my point. So wait, why does that matter? I, I still haven't seen any evidence that ruminant animals even produce long chain fatty acids through like fermentation of fiber. Uh, you've just shown me one study on, on gorillas and gorillas aren't ruminants, by the way. Uh, and they have a gene that 
helps them produce long chain fatty acids. And if you read the abstract of the study, that was in relation to them just being able to create things like cell membranes. And it's not a study. That's a that's a mechanism of a gene. Right. Okay. That has nothing to do with fermentation. I don't. I don't want to dwell. Too, I don't want to dwell too much on this point. I think I made my point. Uh, so you didn't really make a point. I did. We know that omega six vegetable oils are a driver of coronary heart disease, but you're not recommending that that we consume them. Yeah, I generally recommend staying away from uh, like heated vegetable oils and just vegetable okay. oil in general. Okay, wait, go back to that uh, previous study, Frank, about the heated vegetable oils. So, I mean, that wasn't, I mean, you don't, I'm not really going to make a point on this. Uh, so what did it, so what did it say? Um, the other one, it was the other one, I think, the, the next uh, one you moved to. Uh, this one? Yeah, I think. Okay. Um, the point is right. that uh, if you increase the intake of high linoleic vegetable oils and reduce animal fats, it increases all-cause mortality and cardiovascular disease risk. Okay, wait. Uh, this was from 2016. No ran so no randomized control trials have been performed to prove the above interpretation. However, the opposite types of RCTs have been performed by increasing the intake of high linoleic uh, vegetable oils and reducing that of animal fats, which resulted in increased CVD and all-cause mortality. Okay. So, all right, you, you are aware that the American Heart Association did just come out with uh, a report suggesting that based on the most recent randomized control trials, replacement of saturated fat with high poly and monounsaturated fats reduces all-cause mortality risk, including uh, cardiovascular disease mortality. Can you name a food that has poly and monounsaturated fat without saturated fat present? Okay, well, that's not exactly the issue, Frank. Um, like, I, well, I how guess am I supposed to obtain? How am I supposed to obtain nutrition from polyunsaturated, monounsaturated okay. fats if the well, food is the main, in saturated so, fat as well? So wait, the the main issue is consuming too much saturated fat from animal sources and switching it over to plant sources of fat. There aren't really that many plant sources of fat that are very high in saturated fat. Most of the plant foods you mentioned do have high amounts of, I mean, they have some degree of saturated fat. And if you're saying that polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats are good for you, okay, and saturated well, fats are bad, then Frank, what about- Okay, well, Frank, tell me, does a block of cheese have more saturated fat than uh, like a cup of hemp seeds. The, well, that that's not the point. Is th what the food, the omega three to omega six ratio of the food determines the poly to monounsaturated fat ratio. Right. Okay. So if you're going to argue that I, I, this this doesn't make sense to me because you're arguing that we should consume monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, but you can't consume them without consuming saturated fat, and but it's okay to consume short chain saturated fats. This doesn't make any sense to me, but okay. Um, uh, Frank, Frank, here's the thing. You want to lower saturated fat intake, increase poly and monounsaturated fat intake. Plant sources of fat, like hemp seeds, walnuts, flax seeds, pistachios, they have less saturated fat than cheese. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's basically the general guideline that the American Heart Association is, is going with, and that's based on the most recent randomized control trials. So is that, like, do you understand that? Mm hmm. Yeah, you, you're just not showing me any evidence that just you, you, you keep relaying this back to okay, the food, well, but you're not showing any evidence that any specific food is a problem. You're just trying to claim that saturated fat's the problem. Okay, so dietary fats and cardiovascular disease, a presidential advisory from the American Heart Association. You can link all the studies you want, but this well, is, well, this well, is listen, not. Listen, listen, listen. Um, let's let me see. Um, so the effects of dietary saturated fat intake and its replacement by other fats of, uh, so, so, sorry, in summary, randomized controlled trials that lowered intake of dietary saturated fat and replaced it with polyunsaturated vegetable oil uh, reduced CVD by 30%, similar to the reduction achieved by statin, statin treatment. Um, and it goes on to talk about how this actually has a significant effect on cardiovascular disease mortality. Okay, oh, well, no, I'm looking at this, but this is not a study. Okay, this is well, not, this well, is not a study. Second. Well, wait a second. No, it's not a study. It's basically, it's essentially a meta-analysis, but 
Uh, in summary, randomized controlled trials that lowered intake of dietary saturated fat and replaced it with polyunsaturated vegetable oil reduced cardiovascular disease by 30%. So this isn't a 30% uh, reduced risk by, this has actually reduced the rate of cardiovascular disease by 30%. That's not a study. Well, no, this is an analysis, like this is basically a meta-analysis. Okay, so hold on, let me find something. One second. And I'll just link it in the chat here so everyone can, s so if you want the link, Frank. Um, also, you... No, I have so it, but here is a, here's a picture of me eating a steak. As you can see, I am slightly happy. Because I am slightly happy, eating steak is good for you. Thank you. I, I don't know what point you're trying to make. What, what point are you trying to make, Frank? I, I could, no, I'm, I'm saying I, I'm happy eating a steak. So since I'm happy eating a steak, steak must be good for me, right? Okay, um, I don't know so about that. So that's but... like well-being, right? So I guess what Frank's getting at is, uh, Richard, there's a lot of talk about well-being and- No, um... no, what I'm getting at is if you show me an opinion piece that doesn't have any information that I can analyze, it doesn't matter. You, you're, well, what you're saying not, is, this is what you're saying. Piece. My buddy that's Jack told my buddy Jack told me that reducing saturated fat reduces heart disease by 30%. That's what you're telling me. Frank, you don't have the actual study, you it doesn't go matter. Down, Frank, if you go down and read that entire paper, you can see the studies they're referencing. I do have, off the top of my head, I remember reading that study a couple months ago and looking into the studies. And the assumption was that if you reduce saturated fat in your diet, it reduces risk by 30%. But the study was actually done on cholesterol levels. So this is what they did. If you replace animal fats with polyunsaturated fats, you will reduce your cholesterol by 30%. That was their basis. But what they drew that conclusion from was a relative risk of 1.3 in a study. They did it. That study showed a relative risk of 1.3 in that the, the change in, in cholesterol. But a relative risk of 1.3 is below, it doesn't account for confounding factors. Okay, so the, the Frank, whole conclusion I, of that study are on false assumptions. Frank, okay, uh, I literally the, have the, no idea of what you're talking about because you're jabbering about complete nonsense that doesn't make any sense. Okay, let's see if the chat thinks that. Okay, so anyway, um, if you want to actually look at some of the some of the trials, clinical trials that use polyunsaturated fat to replace saturated fat reduce the incidence of CVD. Right. Okay, explain to us what relative risk is because I don't think you understand what it is. Relative risk ratio? Uh, explain what a relative risk is. It's demonstrating in the study, whatever they do, what it changes. So if you have a hundred people that if you have a hundred people that eat, well, let's do 200. If you have a group of 200 people, a hundred of them eat animal fat, a hundred of them reduce their animal fat consumption by 20%. If there is an effect in 20% of that population or whatever the, the degree of change is, that's what the relative risk is looking at. So if, if 20% more people have whatever association you're looking for, cardiovascular disease, if 20% more people have that in your study, then it's going to be a relative risk of 1.2. Okay. Uh, that's a very bad definition of relative risk. It's a pretty so bad one, but it's, it's in epidemiology. It so in epidemiology, risk ratio means, uh, the probability of an outcome. Uh, and so for example, if a relative risk ratio uh, of one, that means you read that off your notebook, buddy. Sorry. Yeah. You read that so off your that notebook. Means, so, so that means uh, if you have a relative relative risk of one, that means the exposure doesn't affect the outcome. Mm -hmm. So basically, if we reduced uh, saturated fat intake, and it caused a what a heart a heart attack risk ratio of one, that means okay, the exposure reducing saturated fat didn't increase the didn't do anything, didn't affect the outcome. Uh, yeah, I said that five minutes ago. Okay, so a relative risk ratio below one means that the that the exposure did affect the outcome and it reduced the uh, frequency of occurrence of that outcome. So I'm I assumed that they are looking I assume that they increase saturated fat. That's why I was saying the inverse is reversed. But that doesn't really matter because they still found inverse associations on other aspects of the trial. I don't really does I mean I don't want to waste any more time on this. Wait, there are no clear effects on uh, stroke risk. Yeah, okay. And those randomized control trials concluded that, yes, reducing saturated fat and replacing it with polyunsaturated uh, fat uh, reduced heart disease risk.
uh, and risk of uh, both fatal and non-fatal heart attack. So that's what that, that paper showed. That's what all the evidence suggests so far, and that's what the that's what the statement that was just put out by the American Heart Association was based on. If the so relative risk if the relative risk doesn't exceed a certain number, it doesn't account for other confounding factors in the lifestyle. No, 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 no. That's not what it means. I'm not saying any, what anything means. I'm saying what relative risk constitutes, and I'm also saying that there were inverse associations with heart disease as well. They found people that had higher rates of heart disease when they reduced their fat animal, animal saturated fat consumption, and they all, there's both sides of the coin. Uh, that's actually the number one so, cause of heart disease. So among people that consume, animals. so you're saying that people that consume saturated fat from red meat have higher rates of heart disease. Okay, well, vegans have lower rates of heart disease than meat eaters, typically. And I'd say, yeah, like based on what, one of the Harvard cohort studies? On meat and mortality, red meat was associated with increased risk of all-cause mortality, including heart disease. So you have a study showing that red meat, moderate red meat consumption causes heart disease? Uh, let me... Okay, so I don't have this pulled up right now. Let me see if I can just quickly find it. Red meat and mortality results from two prospective cohort studies. So conclusions, red meat consumption is associated with an increased risk of total cardiovascular disease and cancer mortality. So again, isn't this epidemiology? That's epidemiology, yes. right? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. But again, if we go to the, so if we go to the uh, hierarchy of evidence here, Look, we don't really need uh, mechanistic data to really prove a point here. Frank, all, and all Frank was asking me to do was uh, show evidence if there's an actual study showing an association between red meat intake and increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Right. And that's what, the, and that, that's what the study found. So, red meat, uh, including both fresh and processed meat, was associated with increased risk of all-cause mortality, including cardiovascular ca cardiovascular disease and cancer and replacement of red meat with pretty much any other food source. They actually did a uh, risk reduction analysis. I think that's what it, what it is. Um, so if you re replace red meat with fish, poultry, nuts, legumes, low-fat dairy, and whole grains, uh, you will, uh, that does correspond with reduced risk of uh, 7 to 19% lower risk of uh, uh, mortality. I think that's all-cause mortality. Um, yeah, so... Now, I, I know this isn't my debate, but um, clear. I mean, epidemiology, to, to say that epidemiology is valid and it's great and it's the, the best thing, um, you know, Dr. Joe Kahn was kind of, well, he's, he's using that perfect. same argument, right? Well, look, epi epidemiology isn't perfect. There are drawbacks, but you need epidemiology for a few things. Like, you can't just rely on mechanistic data. We got really bogged down in that last section. Yeah, that, I now, mean, he, yeah, it's just a waste of fucking time. No, Frank, yeah. let's, all right, let's go back to, let, let's finish this off with, more of a structured format. Now, uh, this is the Netherlands cohort study. Uh, this study demonstrated that cancer cases were highest among vegetarians and pescatarians, 11%, and significantly decreased with increased meat intake one day per week to 7%, and two to five days of meat consumption per week to 5%, and then six to seven days per week to 4%. Uh, this was, this is the uh, Netherlands cohort study, meat investigation cohort, population-based cohort, overrepresented with vegetarians, pescatarians, and and low meat consumers. Okay, so did this actually have a vegan diet group? It had a vegetarian diet group, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not the same thing as vegan. Let me double check if it was. Well, I, I don't think vegan. Frank's arguing like specifically against vegan. I think he's arguing for you know the yeah, animal, yeah, an this, animal inclusive yeah, so diet. The, these people, these people. The point is, these people removed. These were vegetarians, so and then when they increased meat consumption in their diet, their cancer rates were reduced. Uh, what I want to touch, I mean, we touched on how, you know, what plant foods would humans have had access to uh, before 10,000 years ago, but uh, th there's no answer for that. We know that on both ends. So let me just talk on the, I'm going to talk for the next few minutes on the bioavailability and explain why certain nutrients aren't available in okay, a plant-based diet. Uh, just let me inter in, uh, interject here. Um, I've seen you make this argument a lot about bioavailability. 
Why don't you just skip Wait, all that and show whether or not? Oh, no, 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 no. This is kind of important. I only have like 30 more minutes left to. Stand. I will sum up my argument in like four minutes flat. Let, let Richard, let him make well, his argument. And then rather, you can, Richard, piece so, by piece, Frank, you can try you to. Just, I, I've, I've heard this before. I'd rather you just show the data showing that vegans do, in fact, have higher rates of deficiency rather than talking about bioavailability. I actually it's totally besides that. the point. No, look, it, I, I right, could show look, you. I could, look, I could look, if you no. look, Richard, I think a better way to go about it, just respectfully, um, a better way to go about it was let him make his points and then you can pick it apart point by point if you think you can and you know um, and make your points after and then well, i'd rather him just skip to like the actual important bit that vegans do in fact have higher rates of deficiency well he's he didn't say that yet you, you're, you're assuming what he's gonna right. say let's let him make his argument please just give I, him, I've give him, him i know but it's fine but let, i want to give him five to ten minutes i, well, I, I wanted to make this as fair as possible I, I just, i'm just saying i don't have much time left and i'd rather him just hurry up and get to the the actual important part but it, what's important is what the argument he wants to make. So let's okay, let him make sure. his argument. I just okay, want to let him make ahead. the argument. Sure, go try ahead. to be respectful to everybody, and then you can make your argument, and he won't interrupt. Okay. Sure, yeah, sure. go ahead. All right, please. I'm, I'm just going to mute you, respectfully muting you. Um, I know you can unmute because I did that to you on yeah. <laughs> your stream. Um, all right, man. Okay, wait, Actually, wait. Look, um, look, look, can uh, you mute sorry, him? I, I'm, sorry, not, I'm not. Sorry, I got man, five man, more man, minutes. No, I'm not listening. I'm going to take my headphones out. Richard, come on, man. We got We got to let's let him finish, man. Look, no, no, Frank. We gotta let him finish, and then you can tell you can no, make no, all your I points. Don't have to let him finish. You you can make all your points after he finishes, please, Look, Richard. He's he's wasting my time. I want to get to the important part. He keeps talking about phytates and crap and how it inhibits absorption. So then you get to yeah, refute it after. Me. No, refute it after. Show me the data showing that vegans have lo a higher rates of vitamin and mineral deficiencies. Let, let him That's finish his points, and then you is. can make the That's point. That's not what so my then argument is. Then who cares? Then who cares? Because I have to get to my end argument. Richard, okay. you, you can make your point afterwards, man. Please, please, let's just give him five more minutes and then you make your points and you can, if you want to refute that point, refute it, man. Yeah, but what so, I'm asking is what are the metrics for deficiency? Well, well that's... What levels determine the deficiency? What are they What are they using? Okay, well, you can read, I, I, I'm assuming it's the standard for blood work in, in Switzerland. So do you have any data showing that vegans have a significantly increased risk of vitamin A deficiency? Vitamin A deficiency? No, I can show you five mechanisms that literally no, prove no, that no. absorption. No, I don't care about mechanisms. That doesn't matter. Do you have any evidence that shows vegans are at higher risk of vitamin A deficiency? Um, do you want me to, I mean, I made my point on the vitamin A absorption. Um, well, no, I'm going to take a no, minute to show. I, I literally don't care about mechanisms. Show me whether or not. So why, vegans are why, why don't, deficiency. why don't the mechanisms of how your body absorbs because, carotene matter? Because it doesn't matter if vegans are at a higher risk of vitamin A deficiency. So show us whether so who, or not. Who is dictating that they're deficient? Deficiency. Who is dictating that they're deficient? You are claiming that vegans cannot get an adequate amount of a certain. No, I mean, like what, what, who determines what level of vitamin a means deficiency it doesn't matter show me any study it where that is matter. reported show me any study where that is reported my point show me any study where it was reported that vegans have a higher rate of vitamin a deficiency hey, let me just jump in here real quick so you want to see studies you're saying that only the studies matter and frank's saying look the mechanisms are very important the mechanisms matter they, they don't because we're looking at actual health outcomes if you can't actually show health outcome data then that doesn't matter. You can talk about mechanisms all you want. If the health outcome data isn't any different, then the mechanisms don't matter. And according to the study, based on what whatever standard they consider deficient, vegans were not at a higher risk of deficiency for vitamin A. So can you show me one single study that is reported vegans have higher rates of vitamin A deficiency? That wasn't my point. My point was, was. no, my point was that the RDAs might not okay, be correct. Okay, and the correct. and the reference ranges for what we're discussing might not be correct. Because the vitamin D three RDA is correct is incorrect. The vitamin D RDA isn't right. Okay, whatever. And there are also RDAs. So what? What does that have to do with vegan versus vegetarian uh, v, uh, versus Because on, there are on, also on. other RDAs that are not established, like vitamin K, that we know are vital for human health. Okay. okay. So, so the point is the point is so that the standards the standards of deficiency that you're going by there's, they're open to human error and they are just for preventing deficiencies. Okay, they have great, nothing to do okay, with great. ideal human health. So no. do you have any evidence at all that vegans have a higher risk of vitamin A de deficiency or vegans tend to be, have a vitamin A status that is below ideal uh, and V are, sorry, omnivores, they tend to have a vitamin A status that the is over, the overarching point is that 
just you because could. vegans aren't deficient in vitamin A doesn't mean that those are ideal levels. And I'm not saying that even the average person has adequate vitamin A levels. I'm saying that the metric you are using for vitamin A is so abysmally low that it doesn't matter in the context of a vegan diet. Okay, wh where's the evidence that the, the metric in the study, the the where they define deficiency, that's abysmally low? I'll explain my point one more time. You, you didn't make a point. Like, I look, didn't make a point. No, I, went no, over the, I went over the conversion rates of carotene. I went over that they're inhibited by gene polymorphisms. And that they, I also went over that the flavonoids and the antioxidants who cares? inhibit the enzyme. Who cares? The that, data? So you're saying if I drink antifreeze and it converts to oxalic acid in my body and I die, that that's not a mechanism that matters? I just have to well, show the outcome that I died? That's a health outcome. What do you mean? Frank, we're not talking about antifreeze. We're talking about vitamin, uh, vitamin and nutrient status. Well, no, I mean, oxalic acid is why you die from antifreeze. Uh, okay, so if I eat broccoli, am I going to die? Because it, it's the same thing as antifreeze? Like, what the point is the toxicity about? of oxalates in the body and what they do. Well, broccoli okay, doesn't. So broccoli is very low oxalate. Frank, Spinach is very high well, oxalate. But yeah, broccoli, how about this? Broccoli is pretty low. How about this, Frank? Can you show me an association between bean uh, and legume consumption, which is really high in phytates and uh, increased risk of all-cause mortality? Here's a paper from The Lancet, huge meta-analysis. <laughs> the Lancet, so, we got the rich billionaire vegan girl funding the so, study. Yeah, quiet. So here's a meta-analysis from The Lancet, carbohydrate quality in human health, a series of systematic reviews and meta-analyses. What they found was after, uh, this, so this included 135 million person years of data from 185 prospective studies, 85 clinical trials with 4,635 adult uh, participants. Uh, what they found was fiber intake massively reduced risk of all-cause mortality, type 2 diabetes, and even uh, certain forms of cancer and uh, also heart disease. So these high fiber foods like uh, whole grains, uh, oats, beans, lentils, green vegetables, they're all associated with decreased rates of all-cause mortality, including heart disease, diabetes, cancer. So if these foods that are so high in anti-nutrients, oxalates are so bad for you, why can't you show me any health outcome data showing that eating these foods increases risk of all-cause mortality? You can't. And that's because there is no data showing that. All you do is mislead people by just talking about this total I can nonsense. show you that. I can you show you that. No, okay, sure. No, let, him, let him show it. Let him show it. Richard, let's give him a couple so minutes. Give me, let's give, give him like me, a minute let me, or two. Let me make, I'll make one quick point in about two minutes. Okay? But, but it's got to be, let's let's not go on yeah. tangent points. Let's, let's I won't. I respond won't. to Richard's thing and, and stay on point. And Richard, please don't interrupt, man, if you can. Okay. <laughs> I have to leave in like two minutes. Okay, it'll be less than two minutes. So we know phytic acid can chelate things like zinc and lower zinc in the body. Okay, great, so, great. great. The evidence. Which, show me the study showing that. These are you going to let me go for two let minutes, it, or you're just going to postpone me so you don't have to respond no, to the you're, point? You're, you're just you're talking about bullshit. I have to leave in two minutes. You don't know what so my point me. is. You're not making a point. I need health outcome data. You anything on, that comes let, out let, of your mouth let is him completely make irrelevant. Show let me the research. A, Richard, let's let him make the point. Let I have me, a study. I'm going to show. Talk. I'm explaining this for the chat. I'm not explaining this for you. I'm explaining this partially for the chat as well. We are not the only people in this conversation. Frank, you shouldn't even be talking. Just find the study and put it on I screen. have a study I will show right now. Good. Phytic acid inhibits zinc absorption. Zinc deficiency, great, infectious great, disease, great. and mortality not, in the developing world. Great. Not health outcome data. Great. Hold <laughs> on. Richard, let's, let's, I'm going to mute you for a second. Let him, let him finish, okay. Richard, please. Okay. okay, dude. No, no, I'm done. I'm done. The debate's over. I have to leave. I have to get work done. So thanks for having me. Um, that's not health outcome data, Frank. I'll just say that. I asked okay. you to show... I asked you to show inform. Uh, I asked you to show data showing consumption of beans, grains, legumes, uh, nuts, seeds, green vegetable consumption. If that's associated with all kinds, I'm sorry, mortality. I don't just read abstracts of studies. I that. actually try to you understand what so goes on in the body. You. So thank you. You failed. Thanks. So thanks for the debate. Are you, uh, Richard? Whatever. Are you done? Hey, yeah, do, you, no, do you have a closing statement leave. before you leave? Do you have a closing statement? No, there's no closing statement. Uh, Frank is like you're ridiculous. You lie. You make up bull crap. So thank you for this.